here it is. We've come to the end. Um, I am going to introduce our next award winner who cannot be here tonight uh, due to a death in his family. Uh, but it is my distinct privilege to present the Edison Report next to recipient, uh, the next recipient of the Lifetime Achievement Award, and that's Gary Steffi. Just like so many other of tonight's winners. Wait, 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 wait till you hear, you know, again, I, where did, when, did I, when did you all ever sleep? You know, did these eight people ever sleep? No, you didn't. Okay, right. So just like everybody else, uh, Gary's work, career, passion have not only revolved around lighting, but like the others here, he has helped to evolve our profession, our community, as a designer, an innovator, author, editor, mentor, educator, leader, and above all, one who is always learning and giving back to his professional community. As a 1977 graduate of Penn State's architectural engineering in the option at the time that was known as environmental, Gary was already bitten by the lighting bug and his first job took him far away from his Lancaster, Pennsylvania home to Owings Corning in Illinois working as a research engineer in their lighting group. But just a short time later, his path crossed with this guy named Steve Skowachi with a firm named Smith Henchman Grills. Now you all may know them today as the Smith Group. Steve was the leader of the electrical engineering department, and he decided that the engineering team needed to find associates that understood lighting as it was such a critical part of any of their projects. Now, to put things in perspective, lighting design in the 1970s was very much in its infancy. The IELD had only been founded less than a decade before, and other than a few pioneers, maybe in Philadelphia and in the Midwest, Bob Shook, the whole profession really was here in New York City. In 1979, Steve Skowachi convinced Gary to join this firm in Detroit, Detroit, and immediately Gary became a member of an amazing group of individuals whose contributions and impact are still felt today in ways that most of us don't even know. Some of Gary's colleagues are here tonight to receive this award, and some have already received this award. And if you can think of a better starting lineup of a lighting team than Dave DeLora, Naomi Miller, Jan Lennox Moyer, Jim Benya, and of course, Gary, I would like to know. <laughs> I would like to share a story uh, told to me recently from one of those early coworkers about Harry, how Gary had such an immediate impact at the firm. Now think about some of the things we take for granted today, you know, getting an IS file, an SPD file, importing files into and out of AutoCAD and Revit, having material reflectances, absorption values, all this information, and so much more that we take for granted was just not readily available in the light, night, late 1970s. As Naomi Miller shares a story, along comes Gary, and while working on a very challenging project that required the team to understand the overall reflectance of a speckled material whose reflectance was not known and not having a goniometer and integrating sphere. Gary did a mock-up in the firm's lab using pretty rudimentary tools, but with a great understanding of light and physics, Gary was able to determine the material's reflectance was 76%. This so impressed Naomi that to this day, she still remembers that value. Now, less one thing that Gary, with his architectural engineering degree and his work as a research engineer for Corning or as a lighting engineer for Smith was all about the engineering, you would only know half the story. And in 1982, when there were probably less than 50 lighting design firms in the world outside of New York City, Gary left Smith to start his own firm, Gary Steffi Lighting Design, where the rest of the story starts. Sometimes when you are a pioneer, you don't always think of yourself that way, and so Gary only did what his upbringing, his work ethic, his natural intelligence, and curiosity taught him to do, and that is, if something needs to get done, you just do it. So not only did Gary pioneer one of the first successful lighting practices outside of New York, and all of the work that comes with that, getting clients, executing award-winning lighting designs, running a business, developing an expertise in historical lighting renovation and lighting for national landmarks, he somehow found time to teach lighting part-time at Michigan State, Penn State, University of Michigan, and Wayne State. <laughs> and while teaching, he saw the need for textbooks on the subject or architectural lighting design, so he wrote the book. And he also wrote a little book on the lighting fundamentals practice and integrated systems for UNESCO's Encyclopedia of Life Support Systems. So his work as a lighting engineer, lighting designer, teacher, author, then led to one of his many great contributions to our industry and profession, when along with Kevin Hauser, who's here tonight, Rick Mistrick, and Dave DeLora, he co-edited co this little book. 
Anybody see this little baby? So just just a little side gig running the business, you know, being president of ILD, a few other things. He and Kevin and uh, Dave and Rick uh, co-edited uh, the 10th edition of our IES handbook. In addition, Gary, Gary volunteered for and was elected the president of the ILD in 1988, was one of the founding directors of the NCQLP, the National Council for Qualifications for Lighting Professionals, has received an IES Distinguished Service Award, an IES Presidential Award, and has been named an honorary affiliate of the Michigan AIA. And according to another pillars of our industry, and a tall one at that, it was Jim Benya, one of Gary's colleagues in those early years, that told me recently, even before starting his own firm, the one thing that Jim felt set Gary apart from some of the other lighting engineers was that he recognized that understanding the science or the engineering of lighting was only the foundation on which to build a thoughtful and beautifully orchestrated lighting design. For this and for so many other reasons, please join me in congratulating Gary on this extremely well-deserved award. And it, it sure wouldn't be appropriate for, for me to hold the award, but somebody that can hold Gary's award is Stephen. So Stephen, please, accept it on Gary's behalf. My pleasure. Are you going to take that? <laughs> I, I, don't want I, it. Brought, I brought it all the way. I'm going to take it back. Don't How about a round of applause? Like, uh, don't leave. How about a round of applause for our honorees? <laughs> and our MC, Lance Bennett. He did a great job. Thank you all. <laughs>